On today's show, we're talking about financing all of your rental properties, if it's through banks, private lenders, or partnerships. So guys, let us know what you think. Please comment below, let us know what's working for you, let us know what's not. Can't wait to see your comments and can't wait until you see the show. Thanks. Hey everyone, Chris and Jason here. Today we are talking about creative financing strategies for rental properties. There are a number of different ways to finance rentals, whether you own them already or looking to get into it. And in recent years, we've been getting more and more into the different ways. And honestly, we've used several different strategies to finance rental properties. And in different situations, different ones work better. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, talking and you know, working on rental properties has been a hot topic for us, mm -hmm. as well as a lot of our clients. And you know, we've been, you know, over the last few months, we've really tried to get creative to figure out you know, w w the types of rentals we want to add to our portfolio, the different types of financing mechanisms. There's no right or wrong way to do it, mm -hmm. but we wanted to bullet bullet point probably the four best ones, let's call it four, yeah. probably the four most common ones. And, you know, with those, you can get a little bit creative and you can figure out kind of what areas and what type of rental assets you want to add to your portfolio. For sure. So strategy number one, uh, conventional mortgage regular bank financing through a Fannie Mae type large lender. There's a couple of aspects to this and there's pros and cons. One, it's probably gonna have the best terms. You're probably gonna get your uh, you know, lowest uh, rates and points from a loan like that. And there are some cons to it. It's going to be a, like a personal loan, not a, commercial lo uh, not a commercial loan, much like your home mortgage. You're gonna have a tough time having them lend to a business entity. It's going to report to personal credit you're gonna have the Fannie Mae guidelines, like you can only have the X amount of rental properties, so you can use it for a few, but you can't use it forever. You're gonna to have to have good credit, obviously, and you're probably gonna need a good capital contribution on it. Like if you're buying it at, with a tenant already in, or if you're buying it kind of rent ready, mm -hmm. or good, in good condition, you're, you're probably going to need 25, 30% down to, sure. you know, to put in it. Yeah. But again, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad aspect. You know, you're not going to get as creative on trying to, you know, finagle a, a good, a good kind of creative financing options with conventional. It's going to be very cut and dry. You got to stick to whatever the, whatever their guidelines are. Like you said, it's got to be in your personal name. So obviously, check with your attorney related to the liabilities of owning an investment or rental property under your under your personal name, and you're going to be doing, you know, you have the ability to do four or five of them, and a lot of people aren't able to do that, um, you know, just because it shows up on your debt to income ratio and all the good things like that. So, again, nothing nothing wrong with doing it that way, but just under, understand the pros and cons. For sure, and I think if your plan is to get one or two or three of them, it's probably the start best way there. To go. Probably yeah. the best way it's to an go. easy way to start. It's a lot easier yeah. getting that financing than a lot of other types of bank financing, but you do have to have good credit and you need to show your income. Okay. Strategy number two is using private money or hard money. And again, pros and cons to this. Like, it, it could make the most sense if you need construction work, for example. If maybe your tax returns aren't there and you aren't gonna get an approval from a bank type lender. Um, but of course it's expensive. And it's not the kind of thing you can really hold on to forever. But it can be a good strategy, a short-term strategy to acquire, fix, get a property rented out, and then look at a different financing type. Yeah, the hard money lender is not going to give you long-term debt on these things. They're going to come in as bridge capital to help you acquire the property, get the renovations done on it, usually fund the renovations for you. But again, you need to have some sort of exit plan in place. Uh, you know, just just like any just like any, any other ones of ones that we just talked about. You're going to have probably going to have to have good credit that way because the hard money lender is not going to give you money if they don't think they you're able to refinance out to a out to a long-term a long-term setup so we like that strategy and we have a lot of borrowers that come to us that need money they don't want to kind of they don't have the ability to go down the bank route in order to because these things all need work they don't and these banks don't want to come in and give you long-term debt until they're capitalized and they have tenants in place so use hard money pay whatever it costs in order to acquire the property especially if it's a good deal as soon as it's rented you know go go to a bank cool uh, the next strategy that's kind of a newer one. I don't think it's been around in the marketplace forever, but this is your uh, nationwide or regional commercial type lenders that are doing commercial style loans for a bit more expensive than traditional bank stuff, but they're looking for 
uh, bundled investment properties, like you can finance like 10 and like a blanket loan, for example. And th I don't think it's been around forever, but it definitely does have its place in the market, in my opinion. Yeah, the rates are probably around eight or 9%. A lot of investment properties, unless you're in a lower area that has high cash flow, it's hard to get something to cash flow at, at those. And it is kind of quasi bank, yeah, uh, quasi, quasi hard money. So again, it's a little bit cheaper than hard money, but at the same time, they're not just gonna lend money to anybody. So credit's gotta be, credit's gotta be so-so. They do have a little bit more flexibility and I think that's where they kind of come into play more than a bank does related to, well, I don't have good credit, but my partner has good credit and they can sign on with me or I don't have a good uh, balance sheet, but a partner does. So you get a little bit creative and try to do things that way. And, and obviously with that route, you can buy it in an LLC and doesn't have any limitations on how many you could you could purchase or how many you, you, you could own. I'm not 100% sure if they report to personal credit or not. I don't my, so. my, my guess I don't would be, so. exactly, my guess would be, my guess would be no. So it's a good option. Um, I, I think kind of someone that qualifies for that probably has the ability to also go a commercial banking route, which, okay. is, which is a lot cheaper. Um, but you know, it's, it's something to think about and hey, we're just here to kind of give you some options. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And like Jason just mentioned, the uh, the commercial banking strategy number four, which is something we've been uh, employing big time in the past couple years, goes about like this. It's going to be hard to qualify for, but it could be you know the best of both worlds and for a couple reasons. Um, so we're talking about smaller local banks that focus on this type of real estate lending and having them underwrite all your stuff, your company, everything you have going on. There's we haven't even gotten to the property yet. They're underwriting the borrower at this time, which is your company and looking at income and tax returns and assets and everything else, other banking relationship, like having deposit accounts with them helps, and then getting what they call a guidance line of credit up to a certain amount, which is approved, and then you go out and start acquiring properties or maybe just refinancing ones that you already have. So it's gonna be harder to qualify. They're really doing a, a deep look and a, you know, a, a serious kind of underwrite that took a couple months probably. Um, but then after that, it gets easier and the terms are good. The terms are pretty close to what you're going to get from a conventional Fannie Mae type loan. Sure. The, the, uh, like Chris said, I mean, the, the, the rates are pretty decent on it. The one con related to a term of that type of loan is they don't want to commit capital out for much longer than 60 months or a little bit longer than that. So not like a conventional lender, you get a 30 year term on, you're not going to get that. Yeah, it's amortized over that period of time, but they have the ability to call it yeah. at a shorter, shorter, peri shorter period of time. Um, you got to have good credit, you got to have a good, good balance sheet, but it's a good option and because they're local, they know the market and they can work with you and they have some flexibility related to that. No matter what area you're buying these properties in or what, um, who you're using to finance these properties, they're going to differ based on the area. If you're in a really good area, you're going to get higher leverage on some of these things. If you're in a crappy area, you're going to get very low leverage on these things. If at all. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a good or bad deal. You know, reference some of the rental property videos that we've been doing lately related to A, B, and C areas. Um, there's no right or wrong. There's pros and cons of both. Uh, we tr like we always discuss, we like to be kind of in the B area. We get pretty good leverage on them and we have pretty decent cash flow on these as well. And you know, another thing to think about is you, for the most part, either need your own money or you need someone else, access to someone else's money in order to make something like this work. Yeah. Now that being said, if, if they require 30% equity or 30% cash into the deal, it doesn't necessarily have to be your own money. If you're going, you know, a convention, uh, I'm sorry, a, 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 a bank route or yeah, like a conventional bank route, it's gonna be harder to not do it with your own money. But if you're going a commercial route, or you're going a private lender's route, there's a lot more flexibility on bringing in a partner to do that. So really first, figure out yourself, you know, credit ratings, your cash reserve, what type of asset classes you wanna get into, um, A, B, or C areas, and that will really help what route you wanna to, want to go in. There's certainly a time and place for each one of these, but you need to kind of first figure out where, where you are and kind of what approach you have. So what you can do is if, if you need help with this, if you need recommendations related to for lenders, if you say this is the area I'm trying to buy a property in, but I'm not 100% sure who will finance me, comment below and ask any questions that you have. We've been through this in the DC area, we've been through this in the Baltimore area, we've been through this in the Philadelphia market. Um, so between us and the rest of the community that contributes to these videos that we do, we're, we're here to help you, so. Yeah, and I'm gonna jump in with one quick tip, which, and also an ask to, um, 
We see too many people when they're looking at rental properties just ballparking what's going on, ballparking cash flow and expenses and everything else, and that's a mistake. Really, even if it's not your, your nature to do so, get down into the nitty gritty of the numbers and projections and everything else and really, you know, spreadsheet it or you know, use software, and that's what I was gonna ask too. Uh, if you guys have any good tools, uh, maybe some free online stuff or calculators, certain kinds of spreadsheets or software for analyzing your rentals and the cash flow of them and, and that whole part of it, not the management side, but like the, the financial part of it. We'd be curious to know about that. So let us know in the comment section too. Cool. Cool, we appreciate it. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this episode related to financing rental properties and if you liked it, comment below and tell us you liked it, and we're happy to do more segments related to this topic. Thanks again.